My mind has officially been blown with this week's episode of Talentless Nana. Three episodes to go, and it feels like this series is continuing to blow my mind like we're just walking into this show and it has something to prove, so we continue to watch it. This episode had how many times my mind was blown? I actually don't know. We started off with Nana one-upping Kyoya. Kyoya's still believing Nana does have the ability to read minds, so he acted a little rash, got screwed over because of the whole zombie hand melting on the phone sending a text. I was like, that's cool enough. Not the craziest thing we've seen, but solid enough. That blew my mind in a slight fashion. Then we switch over to we have Mitru, who apparently was a psychopath, and I was like, okay, didn't see that coming. Really interested in seeing where they're taking that. Turns out that character is actually someone from five years ago who won a battle royale. Third twist blew my mind. Michu, and then we have Nana end up killing the guy, seemingly killing the guy with the poison, which wasn't surprising when you think about what was happening during the scene, but I didn't see it coming because she had been making a lot of mistakes. And then we twist it with that same guy being alive because not only can he transform, he takes on the power of the people he transformed to, really is the true enemy of humanity. Five times this show blew my mind in a 22 minute time span and I'm like this is why you're my favorite show of the season. Critically there's better shows I believe but in terms of pure entertainment nothing takes the cake for me. This show I feel like has a very solid way of saying hey yeah we're trying to make sure we continue to blow your mind like episode or arc by arc because we want you to be like oh I didn't see that coming which is honestly the same thing kind of classic such as Death Note use. What this series does a little differently than a lot of those shows is they make their characters vulnerable to mistakes. I think this is probably the first time we've truly seen Nana in her internal monologue almost shit her pants when she won. She was able to beat Kyoya, and she goes over her plan. She had essentially a few different plans of how to do it, and because of how tired she was, because of everything that she was doing throughout the past arc here with the whole zombie thing, she almost went with the plan that would have exposed her to the entire class. Even though she beat Kyoya and put Kyoya in a negative spotlight, to her this wasn't a victory. It was something that had she been, you know, made one different move, and she firmly believed, like, I don't even know why I made this other decision. I should have just went with this one because no way Kyoya would keep his eyes on me the entire time. Had she gone with plan B, she would have been exposed and there would have been no way getting out of this. Kyoya is the type of character who already wasn't the most popular, so it doesn't seem like he's going to have the most negative kind of spotlight in comparison to someone like Nana. But still, I was hoping, and like initially walking into this episode, if Kyoya ended up not beating Nana, that he would be ostracized or something like that. Instead, it was kind of like him just having to retreat back to, if his friendship level with the class is at like a 1, is back to being a 0, so it's not worst case scenario. So instead of going with the direction I thought the episode was going to go, it instead just continued to throw us curveballs that we didn't see coming and it made it into an incredible episode. I actually was firmly believing that Mitru was just a psychopath because there's been so much about her character that you're just like, oh, she's so nice. But when you're faced with so much insanity, you don't really think, oh, she's clearly a psychopath who's going to cut her throat. So her falling asleep thinking like she's such a weird girl, she is a weird girl because she's a killer in the making. She's been indoctrinated in thinking that killing all these kids, what good or bad is, isn't up for her to decide. She's just following orders, and she wakes up to a goddamn <laughs> cutter to her throat. That was so shocking to me, and what I really like about Talentless Nana is despite us knowing that its formula is trying to shock and awe us, I kind of believe everything at surface level when it initially happens, because it throws us so much information, so when crazy things happen, you take it at face value, so then when they twist it on its head, you're like, oh, I probably should have thought a bit harder about this and realized that she had a bandage on her hand. There's no way, you know, things like that would happen. There's so many different elements and the idea of her trying to expose her not being able to read minds, I thought was genius because it's such a simple but I think evil way to expose your leader as being a fraud. I have a gift for you. What's in the gift? You don't know because you're tired. I'll come back later. How do you even defeat that? Oh, you put a note on her back to say, I love Nana. So everyone in the class would be thinking about it and it's a way to save face. It's very interesting that there's so many different pieces at play and you weren't sure what her angle was. Because for me watching, I was like, this has been a girl who has tried her best to save so many people. She's had plenty of opportunities to kill or do something to Nana if she truly thought something was happening. And a character who apparently has the ability to heal, why would she even want to save if it would cost her her own life? So the reveal of it being a different person who talks about how like, it seems like there was most likely a conspiracy at a higher level that kind of put it in their minds, but the most powerful just continued to fight until it was two different factions, and the idea of a time stopper versus a time seer, 
and how those two sides clash, that would have been a war to see. Honestly, I wouldn't even be mad if we got like a spin-off manga, a spin-off anime, like OVA series or something that just focused on that war, because you know you're probably going to see a little glimpse of it here and there throughout stories. Probably not much in this season, if we do get a season two, probably, or if you check out the manga, which I'm probably going to do because I just really enjoy this show so much right now. But it's so interesting to see that there's just been this, like, generational, like, indoctrination. Last time it seemingly was like planting the seed of doubt in people's mind, this time it's sending a killer in. And the idea that most of the zombie bodies that we've seen who were in different uniforms and what we're seeing currently, they were pretty much his classmates, which he buried, he admitted. So that kind of covers a little bit of a plot hole that some people were bringing up. They're like, oh, are we even going to touch upon this? And here it is, Talentless not saying this is why it happened. But then there was some that didn't match his own. So it seems like this has been happening for a very, very long time. And it's almost like each generation or the each wave that they send in some form of way to kill the talented because at this point a safe bet would be that most likely the normal humans are just scared of those who are more powerful than them and they've been indoctrinating people to do their dirty work for them you probably could just launch a nuclear bomb on them but then again it's probably something to the lines that you don't want other countries to know you're killing your own or killing theirs or something like that so it's probably trying to be kept on the down low so normal people wouldn't know about it because honestly, the fact that we live in a world here where talented just happened the same way in like a series like My Hero Academia, there's probably always going to be more talented on the rise. You don't want the government to be known for killing the talented. It would just create a war that you probably can't defeat. So most likely the easiest way is, oh, you've been chosen. You're special. Go to a special school. And we kind of keep it on the down low that we're really killing. That seems like most likely what's happening here. So the idea that they continue to find new ways to deal with it sometimes it's an all-out war parents are probably going to say yeah that probably makes sense oh there's disappearance well it didn't happen last generation so i guess it probably makes sense that the government's most likely not killing but eventually there's going to be characters like kyoya who you know start saying what the hell's going on where the teacher is probably just hoping that he doesn't get killed because he knows shit's going wrong and how many times has he seen his own students die it's hard to say i just really like this episode for the amount of twists and turns and every time it did twist or turn Yes, it was there for shock factor, but it didn't feel like nothing was planned. The whole cuts and Mitru not healing herself, you could argue in the moment, oh, she doesn't want to waste her own life on herself. But even some of her mannerisms didn't feel like her, but in the moment you just blindly believed it because this is a show where you don't know who's friend or foe. The biggest one for me was the end of the episode where we saw a first Kyoya and then we saw Mitru. I was like, what is going on? Are they all part of this big plan? I wasn't even thinking that it was a shapeshifter taking different forms because it just felt like the way they were directing it, there was a big conspiracy that we couldn't follow. And then we realized the true enemy of humanity is someone who not only can take the face of anyone, he can take the abilities of anyone. You cannot kill this person because he can just switch to being Kyoya and then he's fine. I imagine his ability, he can only switch to those he's seen before or that is fresh in their mind. I doubt he can just switch willingly to like a billion different forms. I would imagine that you'd have to have a pretty eidetic memory to be able to remember everything. But it's interesting the idea that the cat, a simple cat that probably everyone assumed was just there because it's anime, Kyoya feeding a cat just kind of makes sense and is a good way to try to kill Kyoya in the barn. At the end of the day, this was just, everything has been so perfectly structured that yeah, it's not the most critically written masterpiece of all time, but it does have planning and structuring. And when characters like Nana get out of it seemingly unharmed, it's not like she got out of it unharmed. I honestly think her biggest foil is her own mind and her seeds of doubt. Why is she so fascinated with a girl who seemingly is so selfless when she herself was raised to be selfish? It's so interesting to see a character like this really start to doubt her own training from an indoctrination that probably since she was a baby. There's a lot of things happening and with three episodes left to go and a character who at this point you really were kind of on his good side and now you seemingly try to kill him, you're going to have to obey his every command or you're completely screwed. This is the character who is her biggest foil. And I don't think she can ever defeat him unless somehow she's able to knock him out in a form that isn't Kyoya or another who has the ability to heal herself. Like, it's just, it's crazy, you know what I mean? It's just insane, and I love it for that. This was an incredible episode full of exciting moments, a lot of information revealed, and I'm excited to see more. Of course, as always, let me know your thoughts and feelings and definitely your theories down below. What was your biggest twist in this episode? Because honestly, the whole thing was the biggest twist for me. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, share your support, and hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.